All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Alex Fischera, who is in North Texas. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing good, John. Surviving the heat, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Alex is a uh, former pro athlete, an actual former professional football player, soccer player, as you would say here in the U.S. But yes. played for, you know, played in the MLS and played in the English in the D, in the English league as well. You know, top teams like Reading and uh, Charlton and Millwall, people like that. So, fantastic background. Now as an internationally recognized executive coach, leadership consultant, and speaker with over two decades experience working with top tier executives across the globe. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is your new book called The Business Athlete. So first of all, uh, just give me the genesis and the background of how you came to write this book in the first place, because I know we're talking on air that it was very much a, an accumulation of all these different experiences that you had. Yeah, it really was great. Thanks again, John, uh, for sure. for just speaking with you today and sharing this out there. And it really has been sort of the, the culmination of sort of three paths of my own. So it's a very uh, authentic book. It's it's a, built on a lot of my experiences uh, as a professional athlete um, in my degree, anthropology, specializing in business anthropology. So understanding the complexities of culture and how people. Uh, within the business and organizational settings integrate and, 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 and co cohabitate. Uh, and then also I have a, a background in, in business uh, with my father being a venture capitalist and entrepreneur. And so uh, it was sort of bringing these all together. And at the point I was, um, you know, you get to a point where, you know, it's, it, sometimes I, I, I talk about, you know, whether it's being a coach or something almost like a, like a comedian, you know, when you go out there and you speak and you have to sort of test some things out there. Well, over all the years, you get pretty used to, um, you know, doing the drill and sharing your message. And then eventually it sort of culminates into something. So I got to the point where I felt like uh, there was enough here to to hand to somebody and get them started, get them going in the right direction. Uh, without really needing a whole bunch of uh, my time and effort. And then, uh, you know, put it all together and package it into something I thought was uh, helpful and valuable to other leaders at the same stage. Uh, absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about um, you know, part of, I mean, obviously, as we said, you know, you're prefer, uh, a, a pro athlete and, you know, you not only did you play professionally here, but you went overseas and, you know, you went to multiple different clubs and that takes, there's a certain amount of like a huge amount of mental fortitude that it takes like to go out of your comfort zone, to leave, to go somewhere and then to move from, you know, club to club, maybe season by season or whatever. So talk to me a little bit about how much you had to develop a very, you know, strong mentally in order mm. even to be able to execute on your, your initial career. Well, that was, yeah, you really, um, there's a lot in what you just said there as far as preparing for it. And it really was something uh, that started at a very young age. That's why I kind of like sports and using it as an analogy to talk about, you know, or, or how we work in our professional lives uh, is that it really comes down to just repetitions and, and being uh, in that sort of realm since a really young age, really, you know, 12, 13 is when you're, you're, you're being divided. Um, and being sent on a path or not. So from that age, you're getting a lot of repetitions in these things like mm -hmm. feedback, in these things like um, you know understanding a larger strategy or vision, understanding your role in regards to the team, understanding how to um, you know suffer losses and accept wins and, and be gracious in those. So you're getting all these reps in there, and, and a lot of it's just through just hard work and doing it. But at a certain point, you you realize that. Um, the game sort of shifts and you, you begin to understand that, you know, your value is something that is, is seen by others. And so now you start looking at yourself differently and that's where the separation really occurs uh, and occurred at that point that, you know, everybody can get to a certain skill mm. level, but it was what was between the ears that set that next tier apart. Um, and so there were, you know, it's a lonely, it's a lonely right. trip at times, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's not a lot of friends here. I remember being in locker rooms and like, you have to somehow 
you know you're competing for a very limited amount of spots and you know what you're all there to do and uh you know you have to be friends afterwards and you have to be in a locker room but then you go out there during a, a session or a practice and you're you're actually just getting into the trenches going against everybody competing mm -hmm. and, and going through and you know mixing words and things like that so it's a very you know if your mental game isn't there if you aren't strong if you don't have a lot of self reliance and things like that mm -hmm. um it, it it just ends up being real tough and you know it comes to find out that that's the same fight in the same sort of scenarios that we face every day when we're in organizations and, you know, wanting to become leaders and, mm -hmm. you know, get promoted. Yeah. So, um, so talk to me a little bit. One of the things you touched on there that I think is really important is the, uh, and this obviously goes to the work you do nowadays as well, is the idea of coachability, because that's something that oftentimes you, know, you, you can come across people with great talent in business and sports or whatever, but they're not very coachable. But there's, you can you can come across people who maybe don't have as much talent, but are extremely coachable. And and just so talk to me a little bit about that because I always found that fascinating. Yeah, that's a, and it's important to get that right from the start, really. And that's for both uh, sides mm -hmm. of that equation: yeah. the coach and the coachee. Uh, I I too in this business, you you really learn to understand, you know, who you could really support and serve well, and you know, you have to have a, a relationship there built in an understanding. So before you even get into like a really sort of like, let me, let's get into this and help coach, you want to just have that sort of relationship built. But, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a different style for each person that's there. Um, but really it's, uh, you know, it's the old quote that when the student is ready, the, the teacher will hear, you know, it's right. that, that really is how it goes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've fallen in it before and have tried to coach people that don't want to be coached. But for the most part, um, those I work with, uh, you know, it, it's not a whole bunch. It's a specialty. I mean, you know, we get after it. it it's, uh, you know, t taking on this kind of level of leadership is a, is a big responsibility. It takes a lot of effort. Like you were saying, a lot of fortitude. So it's not mm -hmm. to be taken lightly. We make sure those we work with take it seriously. You know, yeah. and then uh, talk to me about how did you? Because um, this is another great lesson for people. Because let's face it; I mean, we face obstacles and disappointments, and it's all about picking <laughs> yourself and going on. How did you say? Um, I mean, most clubs, I think, they they post what they, the team sheet maybe on a if it's games on a Saturday, maybe on a Thursday or something. They they yeah. announce the team and the, all of that. So if you if you've been working really hard, maybe you've been playing really well, maybe you've even been in the team for the last few weeks, and the team sheet goes up and you're not on it, right? How, and, and this obviously happens to people in, in business and whatever you have disappointments, you know, at sales, particularly, I mean, oh, you know, there you go. so how do you, how do you pick yourself up and how do you help people to pick themselves up and move forward from setbacks? Yeah, that's a, a great practical way to, 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 to apply the stuff here. Um, first thing is we, we've got to kind of have the right mindset about things, um, in that, is the the path back is going to be earned one step at a time we're going to build momentum and build that confidence right back no worries about that right but it is a process and we have to find a, a way to get back to our process as quickly as possible and in fact that's how we can actually measure our own personal and professional growth is how quickly we return to our sort of natural sort of self and so that's what we're looking for in that moment. And those I work with, and anybody who's listening to this, I would I would point you in the direction of the 50% rule mm -hmm. and really understanding that we have control over about half of any situation. There are things we can do and things we can't do. Mm -hmm. And our effort, our time, our energy, that's what we talk about in the Business Athlete, the book is our energy, where we manage our energy and where right. we place our energy is extremely critical, especially after um, some sort of setback or some sort of injury or something like that, which you know I've definitely dealt with and organizations deal with setbacks. So it's really about refocusing as quickly as possible, get control over the things you have control over, um, and then you know just stick to process. And, um, and that usually over time, you know, those steps of confidence bring you right back to the uh, to the dance. And, and I guess one of the things that you need to do, and it's the same for everybody, is is focus on, as you said, focus on what you do. Because if, if we go back to your, your, your football slash soccer days, I mean, if you were dropped 
uh, if you're not on the team and the person playing in your position, you could easily fixate on them, right? You could oh, yeah. get totally fixated on that person. That person is holding you back and it's all their fault. And oh, you could be sitting there on the sideline sort of cheering your team on, but at the same time hoping the guy has a terrible game. Um, how do you... Uh, how how do you f- focus in the right place? Because I think the, the tendency is human nature is sometimes to focus in the wrong place. Yeah, that's, I mean, exactly. So we got a point. And I, the, the, the reason why I can share this is because mm-hmm. I've made the, the, the foolish mistakes. I remember playing NCAA uh, for Rutgers up in New Jersey. You know, I was a young player there. Um, and and took a different route, and I had to I had to swallow a lot of my own pride, my own ego, you know. That's where we've got to really start is understanding our own operating system and manual, and that's usually what it takes. Is we will, we want to be better listeners uh, of this this sort of this this great system we have here and use it to our advantage. So, in energy management, we really break it down um, to four different areas: physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And we just, we, we start to just build back one step at a time. And, you know, a lot of times people think it's, it's, it's going to be a lot harder, but really it's just, if you step in the right direction, you'll see that it's not that hard. It's just, we're going in the wrong direction. So first thing we do is we just, you know, sort of get back, uh, you know, physically and we start, you know, just relooking at things like sleep, look at things like hydration, fuel, understanding our, our uh, you know, the neuroscience of connectivity and things like that. But um, really it's just a, a shift that, you know, you know, you're going to have to find what you have control over in this moment, because that's something you can actually get tangible results out of it, And that will move you forward. Not something uh, you can do for somebody else. So. Yeah. And, and obviously, I mean, the, the energy, the energy management part is, is very fascinating because, um, obviously if we get f- focused or fixated on the wrong things it has a it has a yeah. not just a mental but physiological phys, you know it, it impacts <laughs> yes. in our totality so mm. so when you manage it correctly what does that look like is because we all know what it looks like <laughs> we all yeah it, experience when what you it don't looks like when you don't <laughs> right we're, well we're in the midst of it you know in, 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 in everywhere i mean it's it's yeah. everybody's burning out right stress mm. stress management is what it well, it's really energy management and it's this is where i think the sports side of it is really great is that we're headed into very tough terrain for any leader in general. We know this from macro forecasting, cultural forecasting. We're headed into some tough times. So you've got to be equipped with more than you had before. So a lot of the last 20, 30 years have been very cerebral, a lot of great theories, a lot of great psychology, a lot of great things. Now we have to integrate the rest of the body. We have to be a holistic leader. Right. Um, so we have to learn how to um, cycle what we call routines of oscillation. How do we stretch ourselves to the point of exhaustion, but then recover so we can do it again? If we just keep stretching, we're like a rubber band cold, we snap, mm-hmm. burn out. So What we want to do with energy management is not only put ourselves in position, but we talk a lot about off-field performance. I truly believe that if people are at their best, they do their best work every single time, never been defeated. And so how do we get people at their best? So when they leave your work, what they do from when they leave to when they show up the next time matters a lot. What you do off the field is what directly correlates to how your on-field performance is. So if you're spending all your energy there at work and you're, you're, you're just, you're capped, when you go home, what are the choices? What are the routines? What are the things that are filling your bucket back up so that you can be just as effective tomorrow and still keep running and running and running? So that's what we talk about in the book is, you know, and these are everyday things. These are, you know, mm-hmm. tried and true strategies, things like how can you use music? to change your internal emotional climate. You know, these are right. things, strategies like Kobe Bryant used and all mm-hmm. sorts. Yeah, I just find it um, fascinating. I'm, uh, I love the way you're doing uh, and you're promoting the holistic approach because mm. I do think here, and, and we see it, I mean, we've seen it in medicine forever where everything is separated. You know, physical ailment, go to your regular doctor. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're not, you know, you're a bit stressed out or whatever. You know, you go to a mental health profession, but never the twain shall meet. And maybe yeah. if you want to do a bit of holistic, maybe you go to an acupuncturist then who's got Easter medicine and he doesn't speak. <laughs> They don't speak to each other anyway. So we just keep everything separate. So I'm glad. And the thing is, I think people are starting to wake up and realize that you can no longer keep these things separate. Because like you said, you can't, you you can't just switch off at different times of the day. No. Yeah. And it's, 
I mean, just uh, most people have had the experience of saying, f- first of all, they, they, they sort of, first thing they do is like, let me go out for a walk. And sometimes yeah. they have their best ideas when they're not yeah. doing directly what's stressing them. Yeah. So they get up and they go, and this is how it works. You get up and you go for a walk. That's the physical energy. Then it spills into changing your internal climate. You're all of a sudden feeling better and less stressed. Well, then your mental side, your mental energy engages. You're able to think a little bit better. You're not emotionally hijacked. You can make good decisions. Then you're connected to your purpose. You feel like you have values. You're moving in the right area. So you can see how all four of those energies, those areas play together. And what what I want to give to those out there listening is, an ability to self-diagnose yourself and prescribe to yourself things to do when you when you can't go here or go there. How do you take it after yourself in these moments? Um, and so that's what the the book helps walk them through is sort of the fundamentals and um, but leaves them a lot of room to go explore and go dig deeper into some of those areas. So. Um, yeah. So one of the other things that you just um you just touched upon there because you were talking about music about going out for a walk doing those yeah. things. One of the things that I, I often um, talk with people here about is inputs. Right? Is what 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 are you inputting into your brain? Like what are you inputting first thing in the morning? Because I know the temptation first thing in the morning is to reach for your phone, mm-hmm. maybe check your news sites, which I always say are not there to inform but to provoke you know yeah. reactions, or you go to social media maybe you see something there that triggers it but but you yeah. you could start off your day with all these inputs that are not healthy for you they're not positive they're not setting you up for success so yeah this is um let's get practical because that's what i like to do i'll share mm-hmm. with you what i do in the morning and what i do at the morning is i just i make sure i hit those four areas right so i need to check in and make sure that i am igniting those four areas basically telling this vehicle I'm in control here today. Again, we want to talk about things we have control over, those four energies you have control over. So, um, of course, getting rest kind of starts, you know, getting good rest starts with putting the phone down before you go to bed. (laughs) So, yes, I don't have the phone. Uh, It is an alarm, but I just hit the alarm, no blue light. First thing I do is I splash, well, I kind of get up out of bed and I just kind of roll my muscles around, start manipulating things, moving around. All right. I get up, I go, I splash cold water on my face to wake up that sort of, you know, that cold water gets the neurons going, gets everything activated and gets the blood flowing. I go and I drink water. It goes right down the gullet. So I make sure I go ahead and fuel because we've been asleep for a while. We're dehydrated. You know, we operate. on right. things like this. So you just go to what you do. So then I go to that. Then the next thing I do is I go and I make sure that I get my emotion the right sense. So I go take a cup of coffee and I go outside to get fresh light, fresh light. Again, just priming mm-hmm. the vehicle, right? We don't, we wouldn't, you wouldn't just take your vehicle out in the cold, right? If right, you right. had the option, you'd prime it, get it ready. Sure. So, I'm hitting all those areas for the mental side of it. I like to play a little chess in the morning. So I go and I play a little chess. I do a little reading. I do some meditation and some journaling after that and some stretching. I'm good to go. There's very, and and by the way, after doing all of that, that's like six, seven different things. I get the, I'm a list checker. I get to check off the list (laughs) and that's, that's like an hour into my morning, maybe an hour and a half into it. So, um, I have, you know, curated that over time though but it's it's about building just some of those little by little at a time that i hope people take on if it's just the splashing a little cold water if it's not getting blue light but fresh light in the morning you know just Mm -hmm. integrate some of these things and then prove it to yourself that the impact is is productive for you know for 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 you and, and those around you yeah, and I think it's important because it comes back to what you said about earlier about uh, about recognizing the things that you can control or you do have control over, and that's obviously what you just outlined there. They're all things you have control over. Every everybody pretty much could follow the same routine if they wanted, or find a routine that obviously that suits them. Yeah. But it's completely that part is completely within your control. Yeah, that's what most people think is that when you impose a structure that they lose their freedom. But I would I would actually. I make the counter argument because I've learned it myself. I held that same opinion that actually when you create um, a really functional structure for yourself, the amount of freedom you actually have is, is, is quite a lot. So um, don't let the, the structure of those four areas mm-hmm. bind you. It's, it's really the foundation. And again, you know, if you want to build or scale something large, you're found it's only going to scale as high as your foundation allows it to. So set the foundation and most people, 
I have found that most people, like all humans, we get in our way. And yeah. so what, I, what I'm suggesting is get things out of your way mm. and let, let, you, let what's there happen. And I'm telling you, there's something beautiful there, but we, we get in our way a lot. So let's remove the clutter, remove that stuff. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that goes also for people who think like, oh, when you start putting sales processes and stuff in, in place, it's going to, ooh, it's going to, yeah. it's going to impact my creativity. No, I was just going to set you free if you were, if it's a good process. Now I'm saying it's a good 100%. process. That's what it should be. Well, listen, Alex, this has been fantastic. Uh, as we said, the book is called The Business Athlete, A Game-Changing Guide to Sharpen Your Mindset, Manage Your Energy, and Elevate Your Career. Uh, all of Alex's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, do please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, thanks, John. I really enjoyed it, uh, the conversation. As you can see, we could probably talk for a while on a lot of this stuff. But, for sure. Um, you know, I, you know I've, got a, I've got a business as an HR sort of, we're a, you know, a GC uh, for people projects. So um, whether it's structure, strategy, people, processes, or technology, we work with them. I do a lot of coaching, middle management, leadership, and training. But, um, you know, we get right down to it. You know, if you're looking for change and you're looking for change quick, uh, that's what we do well. So, um, but go ahead and grab the book. I mean, I'm on all the social media platforms, LinkedIn. I, I love when people reach out and, and start a conversation with me. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fantastic. Fantastic. Like, but like I said, I would go ahead and check out the book, go check out the work that Alex is doing. It's fantastic. I, I love the whole, the structure. You've seen the background. I really, I, I think coaches are so important. I think we spend, let's face it, you probably spend money on coaches for your hobbies. Uh, why don't you spend a little money on <laughs> coaches for what puts, yes, what puts investing in yourself food on is the table. never a bad one. <laughs> investing in yourself is never a bad investment. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Alex. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.